Some molecules like to mix with water, and some don't. That's what we'll be talking about in this video. One of the physical concepts that you experience on a daily basis is that opposite electrical charges attract. Positive is drawn to negative, and vice versa. Water is a polar molecule with partial positive charges and partial negative charges. Many of the properties that water has is because of these partial charges. Water is good at mixing with other molecules which have electrical charges. Molecules which mix with water are called hydrophilic or water-loving. Solutions are mixtures of molecules in the same states of matter. A solution has at least two components, the substance being dissolved, which is known as the solute, and the substance that is doing the dissolving, the solvent. And so when we look at an ionic substance like table salt made of sodium and chloride ions, water is able to dissolve this ionic substance because the partial negatives on the water can surround the positive ions, and the partial positives around the water can surround the negative ions, allowing that salt to be dissolved into the water. Solutions in which water is the solvent are called aqueous solutions. All of the cells in your body are filled with aqueous solutions. And they are surrounded by aqueous solutions as well. Water is a great solvent because it can mix with molecules that have electrical charges. If a molecule does not have any electrical charges, it does not mix readily with water. We call molecules which don't mix with water hydrophobic. Or water fearing. A good example of molecules which do not mix with water are oil and grease. Even when hydrophobic and hydrophilic molecules are mixed, they will quickly separate. Think of salad dressing made with oil and vinegar. If it hasn't been shaken in a while, the oil layer will remain separated from the vinegar layer, and certain other molecules will either be dissolved in the aqueous solution or the hydrophobic solution. Because hydrophobic and hydrophilic molecules do not mix, it is easy to see which molecules are denser. Density is how heavy something is in relation to how much volume you have. Oil floats on top of water, showing that water is denser. Now this also means when there's an oil spill, the oil will end up forming a slick on the top of the seawater, and this can have negative impact on the wildlife that are living at the surface of the water, in addition to those that are living within the water. Cleaning up after an oil spill is a very difficult task and can result in negative impacts on an ecosystem. For decades. One of the ways we attempt to remove the oil is through the addition of bacteria 
which can break down the hydrophobic compounds. This is known as bioremediation, trying to remediate or get rid of a problem using a living organism. We consume hydrophobic molecules daily. During digestion, only the surface of the oil droplets can be digested. And so our body actually creates something known as an emulsifier. Our liver produces bile, and bile is an emulsifying agent. It will help break those oil droplets into smaller, tiny little drops that can aid in the digestion of that material. Cleaning dishes shows that it is hard to remove hydrophobic substances using water alone. If you've ever needed to do the dishes, you know it usually takes soap in order to eliminate oil and grease from a dish. Well, why is that? It's because soap molecules are amphipathic, meaning they have one end that's going to mix with the oils and the grease, a hydrophobic end, but then another end that will be hydrophilic and mix with water. And so in essence, what you're doing with the soap is that you are grabbing onto the oil and pulling it away using the water. The reason that soap and detergent works is because half of the soap molecule grabs onto the oil and half of the soap molecule binds to water, allowing you to use water to remove hydrophobic molecules from a surface. Another property of solutions is that molecules within the solution will try to equalize their concentration. Water also tries to equalize concentrations. So water will try to move into any solution with much higher solute concentrations. It's for this reason that we are not able to drink seawater because the water leaves our cells to equalize the concentration of the solutes within the seawater and we would actually dehydrate if we attempt to drink seawater. We need to drink fresh water to hydrate our cells. In our next video, we'll be talking about molecules that store energy.